Hey there, it's CJ Willie, and today I have a review video. In the previous two Magic the Gathering Cracking Booster Packs, I opened two Jumpstart Boosters to put together one 40-card deck. Today I'm going to do a deck tech review on the two theme decks that I pulled from those booster packs. I have in front of me the Well Red Blue deck and the Red Dragons deck. Let's take a look and see how these two decks will mesh together. Move the token emblem deck reminders out of the way. Organize it. All right, let's organize the spells first. And organized by mana cost. I'm going to skip ahead in the video and have them all laid out and I'll review the deck as it's put together. And now let's take a look at the deck tech. Blue has to put out a little bit of the early defense Later on in the game, I can get to the big fatties. I've got a couple of walls, if you will. Suspicious Bookcase is 0-4, clogs up the ground game. Erratic Visionary sits down as a 1-3. I can loot through my deck to get to the bigger creatures. Dragon Hatchling is a little bit more of an aggressive creature. It's a 0-1 up in the air, but if I want to get out early damage, I can pump some mana into it. It has fire breathing. Library Larcenist is a good card. Every time it attacks, I draw a card. I can combo it with Rousing Reed to get up in the air, give it some evasion so it doesn't die, and that will give me some more card advantage. Dragon Speaker Shaman allows me to get my dragons out earlier because it reduces their casting cost. Tome Anima is a little bit of a drawback. I need to be able to draw cards to get it through without being blocked. Dragon Loft Idol can be a great card if I have a dragon on the battlefield. It becomes a 4-4 flyer with Trample. In the dragon slot, I've got two really great dragons, Terror of the Peaks and Rapacious Dragon. Terror of the Peaks is just going to win the game if my opponent can't deal with it. I like Rapacious Dragon because it will give me extra mana where I can play one to two spells a turn or use it to get one of my bigger creatures out. At the top of the curve, I've got Oromos Archive Keeper and Hellkite Punisher, which can be finishers as well. In the spell side of it, Bathe in Dragonfire is okay. It's sorcery speed, but it will take out a creature. I think out of the spells, I really like Rousing Reed. It's going to net me more cards into the hand. It'll give some of my non-flyers evasion by getting them up in the air. Dragon Fodder is a great spell. Gives me a couple of early chump blockers. Buys me some time so I can get these bigger creatures onto the battlefield. Draconic Roar is great. Takes care of creatures. And if I've got a dragon in my hand, it's going to deal damage to my opponent. Curiosity is great to slap on a flyer, say Dragon Hatchling, or another creature with evasion. Every time I deal damage, it's going to draw me cards. I've got 17 land. I have 7 islands and a thriving isle. I have 8 mountain and a thriving bluff. 17 mana should be sufficient with the mana curve in this deck. The only thing that I'm worried about is I have a lot of card draw. And if I can't seal the deal, I could draw through my deck and lose because I've just drawn my entire deck. I think it looks like a really fun blue-red deck where I'll be drawing cards and I can deal damage up in the air. So if my opponent can't deal with flyers, I think this is a deck that can win a lot of games. Well, I've opened two Jumpstart Booster Packs and I have one deck. The problem is, how do I evaluate if the deck is doing really well? Maybe I have some more Jumpstart boosters that I'll be opening. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, please subscribe and share. Until next time, when I'm back to crack two more Jumpstart boosters and have a Jumpstart booster pack battle.